Royal Hair, Book 2, Chapter 18, The Beginning of the End. After your visit to Amalus in Montezero, you and Liam finally return to Valtoria. Only to be greeted by silence as you enter the foyer. Hello, Bertrand? Amanda? Where is everyone? Mayday! Trin's voice echoes from upstairs. You spare a panicked glance from Liam before rushing up the staircase. Liam, hop on your heels. You follow Bertrand's voice to the bathroom and burst in. Where you find Bertrand struggling to wrap Amanda out of her bathtub into the towel in Savannah's arms. She likes splashing even more than Barty did. How is it such a struggle when you didn't want to get them into the bath in the first place? Amanda reaches for you as you sit and she sees you kicking against Bertrand's grip. Amanda. And there she is. You rush forward and sweep her in your arms. Holding her close to your chest, Liam takes the towel and wraps it around her. Baby girl. Mm, I hope you've been good for Uncle Bertrand and Aunt Savannah. Bench Amanda's cheeks and she giggles, grabbing her hand in both of hers, holding it close. <laughs> she was actually uh, quite a handful. Of joy, obviously. That's the Amanda I know and love. Though we were more than happy to care for Amanda in your absence, it's nevertheless good to have you back. She missed you both so much. Thanks again for looking after Amanda. And for the video call. I, mean, I don't know if I would have gone without seeing her adorable face for so long. We really owe you one. I think all with Princess Amanda is thanks enough. Besides, I'm sure you three have plenty of catching up to do. Bertrand and Savannah wave goodbye to Amanda as you balance her on your hip and follow Liam to the nursery. You hear the telltale clacking of nails on the hardwood as Bucky and Daisy round the corner and from the hallway and rush to your heels. Oh, are you two uh, happy to see us too? Willow hops down from the armchair and pads over. She weaves her between your legs and nuzzles her tiny face against her ankle. Ah, uh, gang's all here. Liam gets Amanda dressed. You reach into her crib and grab a soft pink plush toy. Aw, oh, it looks like Amanda really did miss Mommy and Daddy. If she doesn't sleep with her uh, lovely for just any occasion. I learned that our absence was a lovely uh, level event. Good thing your lovey was here to save the day, huh, Amanda? Now that your mom and dad are back, you don't need to worry about a thing. By the end of the betrothal ball, we'll see you in the Avernal home. I'm trying to think of it more as a uh, Amanda's victory ball. I like the sound of that. I just wish Bradshaw and Isabella hadn't insisted on hosting it at their new Cordonian state. I can't believe they called the ballrooms and the palace tired. These ballrooms are historical. One is an exact replica of the ballroom circa Cordonius founding. Yeah, and even with our evidence on the way, heading into their estate feels like I'm walking into the, into the lion's den. I actually had an uh, idea about that. We could insist on hosting the ball here at the Duchy, Valtoria. We'd be retroactively wasting all the time they spent coordinating the event at their palace. I'd love to see the look on Isabella's face if we threw that kind of wrench in her plan. 
then. It's a good thing I had some plans drawn up for the, uh, to renovate the ballroom. This sounds like, uh, the perfect time to use them. Liam pulls out his phone and shows you an artist's rendering. Liam, that's incredible. Say the word and I'll make the call to get the work started. Renovating your duchy's ballroom will let you host the Bethrothal Ball and take control from Isabella and Bradshaw. Why not? I love it. Only, there's another call I want to make first. You lay Amanda safely in her crib, then dig your phone out of you as you lead Liam in the hall. Riley, how unexpected. Your trip back home was uneventful. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call it that, but the trip to Avernal will give me and Liam the best idea. Seeing your home made us realize how important it is to us that Amanda's ball is at her home. So we're going to host the throw the ball here at Duchy Valtoria. Oh, that's not necessary. We've already made all the arrangements. I insist. Mm, I insist. You've done more than enough. We'll have uh, everything arranged in a few hours. But between this and the Fleet Week festivities, I've barely slept the last two weeks. Mmm, that explains it. Explains what? We weren't going to say anything, but you seemed pretty frazzled when we were in Avernal. Luckily, you don't have to worry about any of that now. We'll make sure all of our guests get the new information. You hang up before Isabella can protest any further. Did you hear how hard she had worked to keep the, her voice down? She was livid. We've crashed parties, we've ditched parties, but I don't think we've ever stolen one before. Just one of the many firsts left to come. I guess this means I have a ballroom no matter renovate. The day of the Berthrother Ball, Liam helps you rouse Amanda from her crib, and you head to the boutique to join your friends. Today, we're finally setting Avernal packing. No more tricks, political maneuvering, just us standing up to Cordonia, or for Cordonia and Amanda. And so, I hope everyone brought their game faces. <laughs> By, uh, game faces, you mean epic new outfits? Then yes. Maxwell's been texting us updates from the Royal Tailor ever since we ordered them. I went with the Royal, uh, Purple. Theme to remind Brianna and Isabella, who's really in charge here. You all look amazing. And it means a lot that you're sticking with us, for and Amanda. Have we uh, gotten any updates from Amalus? Not since yesterday, when she said she was en route to, to Cordonia. She's made progress on the encryption. She'd better finish it before you uh, get asked to sign the betrothal pather papers tonight. She sounded pretty confident. Well, as confident as usual. Well, then when she gets here, we'll have the leverage to stop this. Once and for all. Until then, though, you three might want to get dressed up. I uh, talked to the Taylor, Royal Taylors, and they came up with something that's got all power move written all over it. Liam, Amanda, should we give it them a try? Oh, it's pretty. You've unlocked Amethyst Radiance, I'm gonna throw the ball out for your family. I want everyone to know to look at us and know we're Cordonia's royal family. Avernal doesn't stand a chance. And as uh, an added bonus, you look stunning in the dress, my queen. Yes, Amanda. We both look... both think you look amazing. Amanda wriggles happily in your arms, tilting your face expectingly up at you. You and Liam lean down to kiss her cheeks. Everybody ready for this? 
never been ready. Avernal won't know what hit them. Basically, what everyone else said. But, with a bonus, hell yeah! Well, then what's everyone waiting for? The ballroom doors open wide for you to reveal your new opulent ballroom. Wow, Liam. This is even more amazing than I imagined. Amanda squeals and kicks her legs as you step over the threshold, followed by Liam and your friends. <laughs> Seeing you two smile makes it all worth it. You've seriously outdone yourself, Liam. Like, seriously. This ballroom is, like, as fancy as one of the ones at the palace. Then it's perfect to host a ball for our little princess. You Liam scan the room for a mollus as your friends head further inside, but your search is interrupted when Bradshaw and Isabella find you. We're glad to see you're doing what needs to be done tonight. And looking amazing as usual. The purple suits you. Isabella, you should get the name of Queen Riley's to suit her. Everything seems to suit Queen Riley, doesn't it? I figured the fact that we're hosting would be a good tip-off that we'd cooperate. Yes, well, I wish I could be mad at you for making us come here, but you've actually done a good job. A lovely job. We wanted our daughters to throw the ball to be perfect, and it will be. Let's speak of the children, we have the official betrothal documents. Isabella waves a hand and the two servants appear carrying a cumbersome podium with a stack of documents sitting on the top. Right. There will be plenty of time for that later. There had better be. We should wait until everyone's here to witness the commitment between Cordonia and Avalos. Royal lines, of course. But you will send these documents tonight. He and Liam share a knowing look. Mm-hmm. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have other guests to greet. You break away from Isabella and Natural just in time to see greet Penelope and Zeke as they fall into the ballroom. Riley, oh my gosh! I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. This place looks amazing! And I haven't seen such a stylish set of matching outfits since I dressed Merlin and Morgana in mariachi costumes. Hmm, <laughs> hi. If unusual praise, I'll take it. That's kind of her specialty. It's good to see you too, Penelope, and you too, Ziggy. You too. I wish I knew uh, whether to offer congratulations or sympathies today. I'll go get us drinks. I need scotch for you, Ziggy. You always know what I want. Ziggy watches Penelope as she goes in an ador adoring smile on his face. Ziggy, you two seem really happy together. You really think so? You see, Ziggy absently reach for the interior pocket of his jacket. He drops his hand as soon as he seems to realize what he's doing. Definitely. I haven't seen Penelope so comfortable at a party in well ever. She's been through a lot, so it's good to see her with someone who gets her. Siki opens the mouth to respond, but you're too quickly swept up, greeting the rest of your guests. Hello, Princess Amanda. Bonjour, your Highness. Did you? Rolly Liam, good luck tonight. Thanks. We, um, shouldn't need luck, but we just need your friends rejoin you as your phone starts ringing. You pull it out, put it on speaker so your friends can hear. Amalus, where are you? We need that information now. I'm at the secure location nearby. The honor guard are surveilling the area. They've been interfering with my tech. But I hit a roadblock with this description. I need you to get the answers to some security questions. What, like my mother's maiden name type stuff? Basically, yes. Though, in this case, it's Bradshaw's childhood dream job. I've t tapped enough frequency on the airpiece. We need to keep in touch, and a cell phone's a bit obvious. Oh, 
on it. I'll let you know when we have something. You fish out the earpiece. You just have that on you. You never know when you're going to need some remote backup. Ahem. You would have been already in the foyer to kick off the night's events with the joining of the thrones. I trust you received my instructions on the details of the ceremony. I did. But um, I was thinking that as the host of the ball, I should be the MC. That's not... Mm, I insist. We know, Amanda. But it could also be the opportunity for some family small talk. In the foyer, a pair of miniature thrones has been set up at the top of the stairs. The crowd gathers at the base of the stairs as you and Liam ascend with Amanda. Oh, Amanda has a tiny Cordonian throne, and Isaac's is the Avernese style. Doesn't that seem a bit on the nose? You think that mine's bigger? <laughs> Said Amanda on her diminutive throne and then turned to address the crowd. Thank you all for being here. Support your crown princess. Ratra and Isabella asked us to participate in their quaint betrothal tradition, so here we are. Quaint, I... Princess Amanda's outfit is the picture of forgetfulness. Hmm, we may need to call the boy out of the center spring. Now, the hairs will exchange scepters and a heavy-handed symbol of shared power. This could be a chance to ask Isabella about Bradshaw's child, and maybe if I can get um, Isaac to bank up. He leaned down and whispered to Amanda. Amanda, let's look so cute we steal the Fala. Take both temperatures like you deserve. Let's look so cute we steal the Fala. Isabella hands you a baby size scepter, then helps Isaac offer her. A second one to a man. She takes it, then boops Isaac at the nose as she hands him the second one. <laughs> Isaac protests are quickly drowned out by the adoring comments of the crown. Oh, Princess Amanda is so cute for words. Mom, Mom ma make them talk about me. They only care about the dumb baby. Mmm, dumb baby, I'm about to throw you into a pile of crap. Isabella rolls her eyes and ignores her son. The press snaps dozens of pictures as Bradshaw drones on about the symbolism in the moment. He's a demanding little guy, isn't he? I think. I suppose so. Mm, it seems like he takes after his father. Tell me. Did Bradshaw always want to be king? He was more interested in being a war hero when we first met. Not even a general, just part of the rank and file. But his ambitions eventually grew to match mine, and now here we are. She raises an eyebrow, glancing at you, sidelong. Why are you suddenly so interested in my husband's personal life? Oh, uh, we're to be family. I just thought it was time I got to know Amanda's future in laws. Not bad at all, Queen Riley. Trying a few different military titles, and yes. Or no? I got through the first question, but the firewall's still um. I'll ping you when I get something. Well, with that, the joining of the thrones is complete. Pick a man to op off the throne as your guests begin filtering back into the ballroom. Fernick appears to collect Isaac. You did great up there, Amanda. <laughs> Let's take her to the nursery and give her some time away from all the attention. William, bring Amanda to the nursery. She seems to relax as soon as you're alone. We're proud of you, Amanda. You held your own up there. And you helped me get an answer to an important question. <laughs> this was going to be a surprise for later, but since uh, we aren't done with Avenue yet, I thought Amanda could use a little boost tonight. Liam pulls out a brand new lovey. Cute. Looks like a little puppy. And his eyes light up when she sees it, and she instantly reaches for it. It's too bad it's not purple. We go for the night. If you think she needs it now, we can give it to her. Otherwise, I'll hang on to it until this is all finally over. Here you go, baby girl. What do you think? 
Amanda reaches out and touches the lobby as you dangle it in front of her. <sighs> Should we give it a name? Do what do you want to name Amanda's new lobby? Sir Huggins. Sir Huggins, it's perfect. Amanda clutches the edge of the lobby, tugging it gently. Go on, Amanda, it's yours. Yes. Sir Huggins loves you. He pushed the lobby into Amanda, making little kissing noises. <laughs> Sir Huggins loves me too. You dab the lobby into your face, continuing your kisses and noises. But Sir Huggins loves you the most. You turn the lovey back on Amanda, kissing all over her face. Amanda wraps the lovey in a big hug. Lingham gently strokes Amanda's back. The perfect gift for my perfect husband. I think she's uh, ready to head back. Let's show the twins that nothing can keep our Amanda down. As you return to the ballroom with Amanda in Lingham's arms, your earpiece crackles again. Update on the firewall, I've run into a second, second security question. I need you to get the name of Bradshaw's best man. Can you handle that? We'll try, but after my last chat with Isabella, I don't want them to know something's up. What we need is a distraction. Let's split up and try to find something that fits the bill. You give Amanda a kiss on the head as Liam heads off with her towards the other side of the ballroom, scan the crowd. Just concerned about the, what the betrothal means for Princess Amanda's future and for Dunia's. I'm shocked that Queen Riley and King Liam were going ahead with it anyway. They've been in fighting it. In case you haven't noticed, there's a cruiser in a harbor poised to strike. They're trying to keep Cordonia on the good side of a potential dangerous enemy. My point exactly. Spazigi leaning against the wall, fidgeting with something in your, his pocket, and remembering your conversation from earlier. Hey, Ziggy. Is everything okay? You seem a bit nervous. No, no it's, it's nothing. At, at least, nothing you need to worry about. He pulls his hand out of his pocket and reveals what he's been holding. A diamond ring. I've been carrying this around and waiting for the right time to give it to Penelope, but I don't want to steal tonight's spotlight. Ziki. Don't let anything get in the way of love. Especially not this ball, believe me. If you're do really okay with it, I'll do it. How about right now? Now, now, but I don't have anything planned. Don't worry, well, unless the help of Penelope Poodles, the Cordonian Quartet. Leave it to me. You just figure out what you're gonna say to her. Quickly round up Liam, Drake, Maxwell, and Bertrand. Please tell me this isn't what I think it is. Mmm, it so is, but it's, uh, for two great causes. Love and Amanda's future. Say no more! We'll sing an epic love ballad at victory! Attention, attention! The Cordonian Quartet has a special performance for Penelope. What? is love but the briefest touch of your hand and the pounding of my heart at your command my dearest darling if one sentence in this world is true it's that i do i do i do love you what what is all this penelope i've never known anyone as caring and sweet and brave as you i want to spend the rest of my life beside you loving you building a family with you and Merlin and Morgana, of course. He kneels, opening the ring box and gazing up at Penelope with adoration. Ziggy. Penelope Ebram, will you marry me? Yes, yes, yes! As Ziggy rises and Penelope leaps into his arms, he spins her as a kiss. The onlookers applauding. Woohoo! Congratulations. You two are a perfect match. Come here, future sister in law. As Penelope turns to Akiara, people will gather to congratulate the happy couple. You casually glance over Bradshaw. 
Oh, I just love proposals. Don't they remind you of when you and Isabella got engaged? The wedding, the party... Hmm, what's your point? I just want to know... If you have any friends. Excuse me? Catch our rounds on you, no longer interested in proposal fanfare. I have respectable friends, unlike these misfits you associate with. Oh, oh yeah? Prove it. Do you want me to call Marcello or Stefan to prove something to some nosy queen? Jeez, sorry, I didn't mean to offend. It went a lot better than I expected. Try those names. There it is. I'll do the second question. Then we have a new problem. You tilt your head away from Bradshaw and whisper into the earpiece. Color me surprised. The good news is that I've reached the last phase of this encryption and figured out the last password. And the bad news? The password is voice activated and key to Bradshaw's unique vocal signature. If you want the data, you're going to have to find a way to get the man to say the word principal. With what, mind control? Liam steps out of the crowd to join you and Amanda propped up on his lap. For him, he subtly taps an earpiece of his own. If we need to get Bradshaw talking, how about we call for a speech? Attention, everyone. Liam and I were hoping King Bradshaw might say a few words tonight about uh, what it means for our two kingdoms. It would be my pleasure. As a crowd of guests and press gather around the two families, a monster's voice sounds in your ear. Great setup. Now you need to get Prince or Bradshaw to say Prince, Sin, and Plan. That should let me splice the words together into principle. Prince, Sin, and Plan. Bradshaw puffs up his chest, soaking in the attention as Anna holds out a mic to him. We're ready when you are, King Bradshaw. All right, let's uh, start by getting him to say Pringles. Bradshaw, let's hear about uh, your royal title. Do you um, mean uh, need some clarity of the word uh, or meaning of the word King, Queen Riley? But before that. Isabel is one for royal blood. Bradshaw has never a prince. Maybe Queen, uh, maybe Riley just meant to ask uh, what being king means to you. Well, it means being the most powerful person in any room. A lesson which I teach my son every day. No dice. Try him to get him to say sin. Ideally on topic so he doesn't uh, think something's up. Morality. Well, a leader has to have a strong moral compass to be a role model to his people. Uh -huh. The sins of citizens are the sins of his king. I could have said it better myself. We're doing okay. Just try to get him to say plan. Is it just me who's Riley acting a little bit uh, erratic? What does the Kimberly maneuver have to do with our children's betrothal? I thought you uh, might want to elaborate on uh, the plan. And I thought you wanted me to give a speech. Prince Isaac and Princess Amanda and the alliance tonight's betrothal represents. Your guests raise their glasses at the clacking of the Mollus's keyboard comes through your earpiece. You step away from Bradshaw and Isabella's toast with Liam. That went well, especially for a novice scrifter. Got Bradshaw to say some of the symbols for his password. Does that mean you got it? Between what you got him to say and his general inability to shut up, I should have enough. I just need a moment to splice something, everything together. And I'm in... Good God! Stop savoring the moment and send us the file. What was that? The sound of the damn honor guard almost finding this transmission frequency. 
They're about 20 seconds from breaching my last security measures. If I'm going to get this file to you, I'll have to bring it myself. There will be radio silence while I'm on route, but I'll see you soon. How soon, Amalus? There's no answer. You turn to Liam, who speaks low in your ear. Well, at least she's cracked it. Whatever's in there sounded very inconvenient for Avonold. I just hope that's what she's on her way. And she doesn't run in any rubble. You turn to follow Liam's gaze and see that as the crowd dissipates after the speech, Isabel and Bradshaw are walking towards you. What a cozy little chat you two were having. This family stuff. You know how it is. Then, since you're finished and you've kept us waiting for weeks already, let's move this little party along. It's time we sign the betrothal documents for Amanda and Isaac. Now. You guys are out of patience. Can you buy enough time for Amalus and her evidence? Find out in the next chapter. Bloody hell. Oh, this crap. It's never going to end, is it? Pixelberry just loves dragging their heels on this one. And I'm too tired to care. Anyway, thanks for watching. You know what to do. Catch y'all later. Peace.